My name is Ryan Salins and I'm here today with Dr. Jana Mora at Nebraska Medicine. This is a second part of a video series we're doing on looking at annual and pelvic exams for the transgender community. Uh, and so one question that I get quite often from trans men is, one, do I need to have an annual exam or pelvic exam? And then two, how do I even go about scheduling an appointment? Uh, and my recommendation is um, to do a, like a Google search or a web search, uh, put in transgender healthcare, sexual and reproductive health, and see what different facilities pop up near your area. And then go ahead and pick up the phone and call them. And state your name and let them know that you saw that they advertised that they work at the transgender community. And you were hoping you'd be able, you were able to schedule an appointment for an annual or pelvic exam, whatever it is that you're seeking. Uh, and then from there, you'll be entering into your appointment. And Dr. Amora would like to help decrease the levels of stress that individuals may have going into the exam room by actually talking about what takes place during a pelvic exam. So, yeah, yes. yeah. I mean, I think it's important because, as you're recommending, and I and I, you know, totally agree with you. We don't want trans guys to get left out in terms of just the routine screening tests that we recommend to anybody. Um, and so those again are just based on the organs that you have, and that's on that you know schedule that say every three to five years. But also there are guys that maybe have never had a pelvic exam and now have a concern or a problem. So there's you know, several reasons that people might end up coming in for a, a pelvic exam. And I think just knowing, once we kind of talk through it, it does seem to ease tension a little bit. It's, it's you know, going to be a somewhat uncomfortable exam. It, it is somewhat invasive, but I think just to have a good sense of what you're expecting and um, to be prepared for that, I think can help a lot. So the first thing that we'll do is you'll be in uh, an exam room on the exam table with heels out to the side so that the um, doctor or provider can just look at the, at the outside of the vulva. Um, and I want to pause you really quick yeah. to let trans men know that if you're uncomfortable with the words vulva or the words vagina, which are the medically accurate terms for those specific body parts, please feel free to advocate for yourself and let the provider know what words you're comfortable with. Or if providers are watching this, please ask trans men what words they're comfortable yeah. with using regarding their body parts. That's a great point. Thank yeah. you, Ryan. So um, I, I am going to use, just for the video, um, terms that are commonly used and would just be in our textbooks, but I do think that I would really underscore that, that it's important as part of just making, a, this is out to the providers out there, as far as making a patient feel comfortable to try to describe what you're doing, but to ask them, especially just in advance, of what kind of terminology they might prefer. Um, so I'm using vulva to describe the, the skin and the skin folds and everything that's on the outside that we would look at um, just without touching and then just by gently spreading um, the opening to look and see if there's any sores or, or bumps or anything like that. Um, and then we place a speculum exam to look further up inside the opening that I again I'm going to call vagina um, to look inside that and at the to look again for sores or discharge or anything along the length of the vagina and then also looking at the cervix which is at the top of the vagina. The cervix is the opening into the uterus and that's what we're looking for when we do the exam to screen for cervical cancer. So we're placing a speculum. This is a pretty typical narrow speculum um, and I would definitely advocate for trans guys to remind providers that they would like a narrow speculum to be used. Um, I would say particularly for folks who are on tr testosterone and also folks who have not or do not regularly have penetrative sex that their vagina is likely to be um, narrower and because of the testosterone can be a bit drier. Um, and so that's a very just typical reaction, but it can make this exam more uncomfortable for you. If it's really unbearable to you, you may want to talk with your provider about actually using small estrogen tablets just in preparation for this exam that wouldn't affect your testosterone at all. So we put lubrication on that speculum, on the narrow speculum, and insert it into the vagina and then open it. And we're opening it about that far just so that I now, as the provider, I'm putting it in and opening this way and I can see the cervix at the far end. To do the testing that we've been talking about, this is the typical kind of swab that we would use for, um, or a brush that we would use for a pap test, so to check for cervical cancer and HPV. And we insert that and then just gently brush the cervix 
at the far end. I'm going to actually just have you feel that mm -hmm. too, Ryan, that it's, it's like a soft plastic. Yeah, you can't feel it. Some people do feel like that they can they can sense this more than even just movement that it feels maybe kind of scratchy to them But I would say very few people would describe that as painful I mean the part that's uncomfortable is just simply having this in that in that vaginal opening and then this one we use to get a, a Sample of cells from the inner part of the cervix. So it's that narrow opening to the uterus And we want a sample of cells from that canal other tests that we can do at this same time would be just swabs that are checking for gonorrhea and chlamydia or vaginal infections like yeast infection, for example. Um, some of these, just to note, some of these, if you have concerns about these infections, um, this is totally reasonable to collect yourself as a, as a self swab if you don't want to have this whole exam done. Mm -hmm. And gonorrhea and chlamydia testing, if we're doing a pelvic exam, we do it at the cervix, but it also is completely appropriate just to have it done on a urine test. So just, you know, things that, again, I, I do encourage people to get the full screening that they that they should be getting um, just to um, for the best preventive health care. But there are also ways to do this test even, some of these tests um, with, with even less invasive measures. After we take the speculum out, then we do the pelvic exam piece, which is actually just feeling. And so we'll do that with lubrication on gloved hand and feeling usually with two fingers, but sometimes if the vagina is quite narrow, can just use one. Um, and feeling the, the uterus and the ovaries to feel if they feel like they're normal size and shape, if they move easily and there's not a lot of pain or tenderness that would cause you know alarm for any kind of problem or infection or anything like that. Right. Right. In the next video, we'll talk about certain health concerns that there may result from what you learn at the pelvic exam. So, yeah. yeah. The last thing I wanted to mention on this, um, <clears throat> while we're talking about the exam, Ryan, is about um, the IUD as just one form of birth control, but that is quite appealing to lots of trans guys because it is extremely effective. It's you know among the top methods that we know as far as preventing pregnancy um, and has no hormones at all. Um, and it's not that you know trans guys can't use typical hormonal birth control. It, they can, and as far as we know, it does not have any significant effects on their testosterone. But lots of guys really prefer something that has no hormones at all. And that's this, it's a copper IUD. And one of the few drawbacks that it has is that it has to be inserted mm -hmm. by means of a pelvic exam. You have to have the speculum in, and then this device itself gets folded down and inserted. It's a sterile piece of plastic when it's done you know, in, in real life. And it gets inserted and just sits in the uterus. And the, then the strings come out and we clip those so that you and partners don't even, shouldn't even notice that it's there. And that's highly effective for 12 years. So I just wanted to give a little extra plug for that while we're talking about pelvic exams. Because again, it's, I think lots of trans guys who are at risk for pregnancy would, are very interested in that, but their concern is going through this part first. So just to give another plug for um, effective contraception if you're in a position that you need it. And on average, how long does one of, the, does one of these exams take? Um, maybe three minutes. Three minutes. Right. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, it's you know usually when it comes up and people come in and they're having any kind of concern and we mention it, I I certainly never push anybody to have it done there if they want to go home and think about it, but the truth is it's not usually it's really not worth the worry. It's you know lots of lubrication and better just to get it off your mind in all honesty. Okay. Well, thank you for going over all. This. Yeah, absolutely. All right.